Welcome to Around the Dog World here at the Chesford Grange Hotel in Warwickshire in the heart of England. We're here for the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final 2012, where 27 of the UK's top champion dogs come to compete for the chance to take on the rest of the world at the Yukonuba World Challenge. <laughs> On today's programme, not only will we see two mystery judges judge 27 of the UK's top champion dogs, but we also want to find out what some people here have thought about what's gone on in the dog world in 2012. But before we head over to ringside, we need to make sure we haven't missed any of the results since our last programme. Today, I'm joined by Andrew Brace. Now, Andrew, the weeks that followed our last programme was a good couple of weeks for gun dogs. Well, for one in particular, Mer Merlin the Irish Water Spaniel. Who has now won the Best in Show Awards at the three, the three principal gun dog shows, the National Gun Dog, uh, the Scottish Gun Dog, and the Gun Dog Society of Wales, in addition, of course, to his Crafts Gun Dog group. So he's on a bit of a high. Yeah, it's a, a fantastic year. He's third top dog as well, currently. Mm -hmm. At the moment, yeah. at the moment, yeah. yeah he's, he's had quite an impact since he arrived from the States early in 2011. And next up was Midland Counties, Andrew, and I, I know for a fact you, you liked this lineup, didn't you? Uh, Midland Counties was a memorable show in, in the opinion of, of many experts. All the groups and best in show were judged by Anne Ingram, a lady from Ireland who, in my opinion, is one of the best judges in the world. Uh, she had some excellent groups and her group winners provided us with what a lot of people consider to be the best best in show lineup we have ever seen. I've never seen a better best in show lineup anywhere. It was absolutely superb. So which one of those spectacular dogs actually went on to, to get the top award? Well, as I said, she was spoiled for choice. And to be honest, I know Anne very well. Mm. And um, so does Di Johnson, who was sat ringside with me at the time. And we had honestly had no idea where she was going to point because you know they were all showing well they were all outstanding examples of their breed but eventually she couldn't get past um, the, the veteran English Springer bitch who was firing on all cylinders and um, she was such a fabulous dog free of exaggeration in wonderful condition uh, and just moving as if she could go on all day. And Midland Counties was actually Anne Corbett's birthday. What a weekend. So uh, <laughs> sh I think there were probably a few bottles open that night to try and mirror if Possibly. I know Anne. Possibly. And then reserve best in show at Midland Counties was Graham. The, uh, the toy the, poodle. The Vanatonia toy poodle. Um, and then the, the week later, we go to Working and Pastoral Breeds of Scotland. Mm -hmm. uh, we see again one of the, the group winners there, Movado, the Bouvier. Mo the Bouvier, top, yeah. the top the working group under Jan Rowell. And the pastoral winner? The pastoral group was won by this relatively young Australian shepherd bitch, Allmark Fifth Avenue, who's now won four groups, uh, owned by Robert Harlow in partnership with the Allens. And um, she was reserved best in show at the Welsh Kennel Club in the summer. And she actually went all the way in Scotland getting past the Bouvier. So a great win for the Aussie. Yeah. Now we're up to date with all the show results since our last programme. We can take a look at the action here at the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final 2012. 27 dogs look to impress two judges with the hope of a trip to Orlando for one of the most spectacular events in the world of dogs, the Yukonuba World Challenge. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce the two judges. It's not going to be a surprise to you anymore, I'm sure, as you've all been scurrying through your programs. Neither of them really need much introduction, but we're going to do ladies first. Someone who began her doggy career with German Shepherds, was then instrumental in developing the Akita in this country, and has since time become involved with other rarer breeds. Would you please put your hands together for Meg Purnell Carpenter. <laughs> the gentleman of the duo has come across the water from Ireland. Although he's been associated with various breeds and numerous terriers, he is arguably the most famous wire fox terrier breeder in the world. And I'm talking, of course, of Harry O'Donoghue. <laughs> the 
So I'm now going to ask both the judges to walk around, look at the 27 dogs before they leave us. And I'm sure the immediate reaction will be scratching of heads and thinking, oh my God, how are we going to sort this lot out? Anyhow, Meg, Harry, please have a wonder. We have a guest appearance by last year's Yukonuba Champion Stakes winner. You don't, of course, need me to tell you who it was. She's going to face it this way. Many of you were here last year. Those of you, those of you who were with us last year will remember the mild hysteria in the ring when Mr. Bloxham said to Margaret, have you got a passport? She of course thought he was talking about her and she said no. Where a point we had one very excited pointer, I seem to recall. But anyhow, Margaret did eventually get a passport. Elizabeth did get to Florida. She so, Margaret, you had a bit of a spectacular year last year after the stakes, didn't you? We've had a wonderful year. Elizabeth and I have had, it's just been totally amazing. Uh, after the stakes, went to Orlando and became first runners up, which is third. Um, <laughs> And then, of course, she went on then to win Crofts, which was out of this world. Yeah, yeah absolutely fantastic. We, we spoke to you then, and you're still in a high. How, how do you feel now? Oh, it's got, it, that's going to last me a lifetime. That <laughs> is wonderful, you know, absolutely brilliant. It's a lifetime's ambition that should last a lifetime after that. Yeah, so brilliant. And, and after winning the stakes last year, how was the experience getting to go to the, the world final? Um, the, all these dogs today are going with, with the hope of, of a chance to go to Orlando. How, how was that experience for you and you and Elizabeth? Oh, it, it was. Oh, it was a <laughs> superb experience. You spoilt rotten. You, the hotel is fantastic. Um, it's a bit stressful because you don't know what's going to happen. It's. Um, there's a lot to do. You have a lot of things to do, which is tiring, but oh, amazing, an amazing time, absolutely amazing time. Uh, I, I would recommend anybody did it, because just, just to do it is, is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, Margaret, you've had a reasonable year, I think. Yeah. And you'll never believe it, she's actually going back to Orlando on the back of going best in show at Crufts. I, I actually pity Orlando, believe you me. Okay, so can we now have the first group of dogs in, please? The last lap, so being number 17 in your program. We don't need to tell the judges any more about them. However, the judges can't hear me, so I can keep you filled in on all of our competitors. The first of which is, as Andrew said, the Lhasa Apso number 17. This is champion, multi-international and American champion, Sheik Shua Tarzen Knockout. Born in Finland, but now living in the UK with Michaela Hall. As I'm sure you are aware, the way that the judging system works at this event is that when our two judges have seen these five dogs, they will award each of them points out of 100. And this system will continue right through until they've actually pointed 27 dogs. And then our highest scoring seven will return for the final judgment 
and to decide who is actually going to Florida in December. Next up is the miniature schnauzer, champion Albor's Jazz for Ashen Cruise, who qualified at Richmond, now has 11 cc's and two group fours, was bred in Belgium and imported at 10 months old. This is Eric, champion Ua Cantona, and he's nearly three years old. He's won 28 cc's, 12 groups, multiple group placements, and two best in show at Albury Championship shows, and one reserve best in show at Albury Championship shows. He's been best in show at 10 Breed Championship shows. We're very excited to be here, and we're looking forward to the competition very much with all the good quality dogs here today. After the break, come back to see some more from the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final. the dog world we're here today at the Yukonuba champion stakes final and the first dog for the judges to go over is the Labrador champion Waringa's Gundaroo who qualified at Boston now three years old and is owned bred and handled by David Kood the winner of five cc's and ten reserves he is a very dual purpose dog holding his gun dog working test Next up for the judges is the Dalmatian champion Offerdale Chevalier. Qualifying at Welks under Terry Nethercott, he has 18 cc's and 16 best of breeds. Earlier on this year at Welsh Kennel Club, we saw him take the utility group and best opposite sex in show. His litter sister also qualified and we will see her a little later on. So having had their hands on and watched moving individually, our first quintet Judges will now award points to each of them out of 100. So thank you very much for our first five as they leave after the first leg of the competition. Can we have the second five in now, please? Our group two. First in group two is the Saluki champion Baghdad Kareem. He qualified at Birmingham earlier on in 2012 and is imported from Australia. The winner of three CCs and three reserve CCs on the very first Around the Dog World at City of Birmingham in 2011, we saw him take Group 4. This is the third year we've got two trimeres qualified in the champion stakes. Um, I'm showing show champion trimere Tigra, Roxy, which I own. She's eight years old, so she's won two best in shows, one reserve best in show, two best veteran in shows, six group placings, group ones, many other group placings. 
Um, 29 tickets and lots of best of breeds, I can't remember how many. <laughs> My name is Adam Rose and I've qualified today with my German short haired pointer called Morgan. Uh, he's four years old and he won through at Southern Counties Dog Show earlier this year. Um, he's uh, an amazing dog to live with. He's a winner of 10 challenge certificates in the UK uh, and he also won Best to Breed at Crufts in 2010. Um, it's the first time I've been to, to these finals. Um, it's a competitor or a spectator. I'm really looking forward to it and it, it should be a, a really good day. It's food, she can smell it, it's somewhere. Next in group two is the litter sister of the earlier Dalmatian. This is champion Offerdale's Sapphire. She qualified at three counties, owned and bred by Jenny Alexander, but is being handled by the owner of the sire, Hella Hoy, from Norway. Next up for the judges is the Labrador, show champion, American and Canadian champion, Salty Dog of Tampa Bay. Salty qualified at National Gun Dog and is now a veteran at seven years old. Owned by Linda Hess in the United States, but Salty lives with Anthony Allen here in the UK, who is handling in the ring. While in the UK, he has won 22 CCs, reserve best in show at Welts, and best veteran at Darlington. So our second five have now been individually examined and gated, and now it's points time. Thank you very much to our second five. Uh, is group three ready? First up in group three is the Italian Greyhound champion Florita Tepitina. She qualified at Blackpool and is the winner of 17 CCs, two reserves and 13 best of breeds. Owned, bred and handled by Helen Lister. She was a Pet Plan Junior Stakes finalist in 2010 and also best in show at the Italian Greyhound Club Championship Show in 2010. Next up is the American Cocker Spaniel. This is show champion Afterglow Pearls a Singer. Pearl has six CCs, although she's still a junior. She won Group 4 at Welsh Kennel Club and Group 3 at Darlington. We have our first whippet of the day. This is Swedish and Danish champion Adagio Crowdstopper. He's the winner of two CCs and qualified at East of England. Bred and owned by Stefan Raghammer in Sweden, but is living and is being handled by Rob Wheeler in the UK. We saw him win the Hound Group at City of Birmingham on a previous Around the Dog World. 
Our second English Springer Spaniel is show champion Trimere Talking Point at Alany. Qualifying at SKC May. The winner of 22 CCs and seven reserve CCs. Is owned by Richard Bott and Anthony Allen, but is being handled in the ring today by Kirsty Miller. And last in this group is the Irish Wolfhound Irish champion Canock Long Henry Higgins, who qualified at Belfast. In the UK, he has one CC but multiple green stars, making him an Irish champion. He's owned by Tim Marion and Ian Finney and was a best puppy in show in both the UK and Ireland. So our third group now lining up for the points allocation. So thank you very much to group three as they leave the ring. The American Cocker number 13. This is show champion Reminis Endearing who qualified at Windsor. The winner of six CCs and seven reserve CCs. This is Emma Bugler, the owner's first homebred show champion. She was also a Puppet of the Year Heat winner in 2009. Next up is the Dandy Dinment, champion Inzavar Silver Gilt. At seven years old, he is a veteran with 29 cc's and 40 best of breeds. He was top dandy in 2006, 2007 and 2008. He was also best in show at Scottish Breeds in 2009. Next is the Whippet champion Kaluni going Dutch, who qualified at SKC in August. She was bred in Ireland, but is now owned by David and Yvette Short in Scotland. The winner of three CCs and Dog of the Year at the Whippet Stars competition in 2011. Come back after the break to hear the thoughts of some of the people here about the main stories in 2012. First of all, could I just say, ladies and gentlemen, please don't believe everything that you've heard about me, because the truth is definitely much worse. <laughs> and this lady moved in with a rough collie, and I thought that that dog was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. Well, he let this bitch out, and Pat just went, 
And I said, you shut up. I said, we haven't got her. <laughs> I, said, I said, we haven't got her in the car yet. <laughs> She's doing the standards. Anyway, uh, Lily goes in and she said, um, Miss Turner, Miss Turner, lacquer is prohibited here in the States. So Lily said, it is a tome and all. I've not put one up with lacquer in it air. Well, she had a little 10-inch toy and its top knot was about here, I guess. <laughs> and when it moved, it was pulling it to the side. It was like leaning over. And she let these two bitches out in the paddock, and Steve was standing there, and it was another do like at Atkinson's with Pat. Steve said to me, Look at that, he said. What I'd give to own a bitch like that. I said, you be quiet. He said, that's not the champion. <laughs> and Alan said, what do you think? I said, oh, yes, I'll have her. And as soon as I said I'd have her, Alan shook hands with me. And he turned to Steve. He said, there's no offence here. He said, I'm not selling this bitch to you. I'm selling it to Derek. As, uh, This is ridiculous. No, no, no. As no. a lifelong friend and a pensioner. <laughs> so, so I said, all oh, right. And he charged me 200 pounds. Good Lord. For that bitch. We made her a champion and she produced us three champions. Mm. <laughs> Welcome back to Around the Dog World. We're here today at the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final. Next up for the judges is the Danish champion, Kazan Boogie Woogie at Kimmelaz. Qualifying at Bath under Janet Richards is a Danish grand champion and has been successfully campaigned in Austria, Belgium and Romania. Briard has uh, has the Briard withdrawn? Yes, yes. Obviously, his mind was on other things. Next up, though, is the Gordon Setter Show Champion Hernwood Diamond Rock. Qualifying at Leeds now has four CCs and seven reserve CCs. Diamond was the first ever Gordon Setter to qualify for the Pup of the Year final in 2008. And this, this is the third generation of Hernwood to qualify for the Yukonuba Champion Stakes. Next up for the judges is another Gordon Setter and litter brother to the previous dog. This is show champion Hernwood Talladega Racer. Qualifying at City of Birmingham with five CCs and eight reserve CCs. He's the youngest Gordon Setter to win a group at a championship show, which he did in August 2008. Okay, so if we can have this five, our well, six has been reduced to five brought out to get their points. So leaving the ring now, our penultimate group, and thank you very much. First in Group 5 is the Shetland Sheepdog champion France Hill Tuto. Qualifying at Darlington is now the winner of 8 CCs. Mm. 
the Sheltie was best in show at Working in Pastoral Breeds of Wales in 2009 and a group winner at Belfast. He was also best in show at the Scottish Shetland Sheepdog Club Centenary Show. Second in Group 5 for the judges is number one, the Bichon Frise champion Arthorns ready to rumble. Rumble qualified at LKA in 2011 and is owned by Nigel and Trudy Bliggin. The winner of four CCs and nine reserves, he is just two years old. He's being handled today by Tamara Dawson, who is the only handler to have won two Junior Handler of the Year titles. This champion sole trader Peekaboo, better known as Jilly. Um, she is wonderfully the number one dog in the country this year. Um, she has won 26 groups and 26 cc's. She qualified on her first attempt at Driffield Championship Show under Rob Sampson. Um, and we're absolutely overjoyed about being here today. It's a real honour to be able to show Juliet Lee Champion Stakes Finals. Border Collie is next up, champion Jan Bell Jameson, qualifying at Bournemouth. Yet another veteran at seven years old, the winner of 21 CCs and 13 reserve CCs. Also a group winner with many places. He also has a formidable record at breed shows with five best in shows. Next we have the pointer. This is show champion Kiswahili Martin at Canix. Martin qualified at Border Union and is now the winner of 25 CCs. In May in 2012, he was the winner of Best in Show at SKC. And this is now the fourth year in a row Martin has qualified for the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final. <laughs> Finally, in Group 5, we have the Doberman. This is champion, Luxembourg champion, Supetas Ozzy Osbourne. Qualifying at South Wales, Ozzy is now the winner of an incredible 60 cc's, making him the breed record holder. Numerous groups, he was also runner-up top dog in 2011. And that concludes the individual hands-on. So we're lining up our final six to receive their points. So thank you very much to our final six dogs and we're now going to invite all 27 to return to the ring and we'll then announce which dogs will be in the final seven. While some calculations are being made, let's go and get the thoughts of some of the people here about the major news stories in 2012. 
big topic of conversation at shows this year has been the veterinary checks on winners in what are called the high profile breeds. I know many people feel this is unfair. Do you think that random checks on winners in all breeds would be a better option? I personally don't think that random vet checks would be the ideal solution because at the moment the vets that are checking the 14 high profile breeds have been to meetings given by the kennel club, they've been to training given by senior vets and they know what they're looking for in those 14 breeds. If every general champ show had a number of other breeds to be checked every day and there would be different breeds every day, there are certain peculiarities about all these breeds that would the vets know these peculiarities and how much time would it take at general championship shows? I do think that the, the vet checking has got to go on until Crufts next year and I know that the Kennel Club meet, are having meetings to discuss opening it up a bit more and widening the scope. Maybe there are more breeds need doing than the 14, we know that. And in some cases, certainly in my own breed, where the same dog has passed the vet check 17 times, that hasn't actually proved that the breed is any healthier, although I personally feel our breed is much healthier, not just since this started, but since we started doing a lot more of the health checks. But perhaps they should now open it up to not just best of breeds, best opposite sex, best puppies in breeds even, just to widen it up so that the breed itself is shown to be more healthy. Certainly one healthy dog in a breed does not mean that the whole breed is better than it was before. It's been a long time since the Kennel Club agreed to review its coat testing procedures. What are your thoughts on how things stand now? Right, OK, it's um, two, nearly two years, so it's two years next May that the uh, whole coat testing debacle uh, started off at the AGM. Uh, we're still waiting to hear. Um, the interesting thing is that there was this worry that if this co the, the whole coat testing debate was not policed in the way that it had been, that things would become uh, excessive. Well, there's been no excess in the show ring. Uh, in fact, terriers look great, the poodles look great, if everything looks great, and there is no excess presentation. So, personally, I would like to see the whole thing just go away and be left as it is. But if they're going to bring the testing back, it's our sincere hope, and I do believe that the way things are going, they will not victimise any breeds, it will be coat testing across all breeds. What message does the Kennel Club need to be getting across to the public about British pedigree dogs? Well, in my opinion, Simon, the Kennel Club should be getting across to the general public that we British breeders are responsible breeders. This is where they should be going to buy their puppies from. Show breeders particularly, we have to breed dogs with good temperaments and healthy stock. They're going in the show ring. They have got to be like that. It's, in my opinion, it's the Kennel Club's responsibility to educate the public to know that pedigree dogs are where the future is. I feel quite let down by the Kennel Club. They used to be proud of British breeders and they should be again. the new chairman was sat in the audience tonight? Yes. What would you ask him? To care. To care about us a bit more. To remember that the Kennel Club is supposed to be for the furtherance of pedigree dogs and we are pedigree dogs. Um, I want them to care about us. I want them to share our interests. I want them to stop caring about the RSPCA and care about us. I remember once Edna gave me a bitch that I was very thrilled with and Olive said, where did you get that from? And I said, Mrs. Harold gave it to me. I said, she did, she couldn't have sold the damn thing, could she? <laughs> <laughs> and then Olive gave me a bitch that I thought was lovely and Edna said, well, make sure you showed him long grass with feet like that. <laughs>
they stop my life effectively for mistakes. I see myself as the judge that was banned. We have seven finalists. I'm going to call the following numbers out in numerical order. If you hear your number called, will you please walk into the center of the ring? Number one, the Bichon Frise. Number five, the Dalmatian male. Number 16, one of the Labradors. Number 19, the Peking E's. Number 20, one of the Whippets. Number 24, the Petit Basset Griffon Bonville. And number 27, one of the American Cocker Spaniels. So could we say a big thank you to the remaining 19 dogs and thank you so much for joining us today and giving us a full house and congratulations on competing at the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final. What happens now is our seven finalists are going to be scored one more time by the two judges. The Bichon Frise number one. And you can applaud and encourage as much as you like. It's not going to have the slightest bit of difference to the judges, but it might make the handlers feel a lot better. Number five, the Dalmatian male. Number 16, the Labrador Retriever. Number 19, the Pekingese Male. Incidentally, our first five finalists are all male, and the remaining two are bitches. Number 20, the Whippets. The first of which is number 24, the Petit Basset Griffon Vendéon. And finally, the American Cocker Spaniel bitch number 27. So we have seven finalists, seven excited and slightly nervous handlers, I would imagine because very soon one of them is going to have the opportunity to make the trip of a lifetime to Orlando, Florida and participate 
in the Yukonuba World Challenge. In fifth place, the Pekingese champion Yaki Ua Cantona. In fourth place, the Whippet champion Kaluni Going Dutch. In third place, the American Cocker Spaniel show champion Afterglow Pearls a Singer. In second place, the Petite Basset Griffon Vendéon champion soul trader Peekaboo. You three just like to sort of spread yourselves up the mat a little bit, get more at center stage. <coughs> Whoops. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Tactics. So who is going to Orlando in December? Representing the UK at the 2012 Yukonuba World Challenge will be... Have you all got passports, by the way? <laughs> and have your dogs got passports? Now, are you absolutely certain? And Tamara, are you going to take your mother with you when you go to Orlando? Yeah. It's the Bichon Frise <laughs> champion, Arthlons, ready to rumble, wins the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final. There's a little excitement over there. And can I say a huge thank you to the Dalmatian and the Labrador for putting up such a great fight. Your five winners, ladies and gentlemen, led off with your World Challenge qualifier. The Bichon Frise champion, Arth Lawns, ready to rumble. So we've just watched the Yukonuba Champion Stakes Final for 2012 and the winner was the Bichon Champion Arth Lange Ready to Rumble. Meg, what did you think of that, that dog in the end? I thought he was wonderful. He's a real little showman. Um, he's very balanced. He moved like I don't know what around the ring. He outmoved some of the larger dogs mm. and I think he thoroughly deserved his place. And, and Harry, yourself, what do you think of the, the winner? Then? Wonderful dog. Lovely outline, lovely shape, shape lovely make. Lovely mover, beautifully presented, and very well handled. And, and both of you, you got invited to, to judge the champion stakes, and you, you were mystery judges right into the last minute. Yes. How do you think the whole the whole event has gone? 
I think it's gone extremely well. Um, I certainly attended last year and I felt that this year was even better than last year. To be honest with you, the exhibitors and everybody that participates are very, very lucky to have a competition like this to aim for at the end of the year. It's one of the very few ones that are left. And overall, the, the, the quality of the field overall, these are the 27 of the, the top dogs in the country. What did you think about the quality? Overall, obviously, they were all champions, so they were all good of their type. Um, I think we've seen better in some, um, but it's the dog on the day. Some days dogs don't want to show. On another day, they're really on their toes. So you have to judge what's in front of you there and then on that day. Well, the last five dogs were really top class. Yeah. Mm. And they could change places again. But on the day, the Bichon stood that little bit above the rest. And I don't think we had any hesitation in putting the beach on. So, Tamara Dawson, you've just won the Yukonuba Champion Stakes final. How do you feel? Unbelievable. Um, I can't believe how well he's done. He showed really well. And I can't believe I've done it and I'm going to Florida. <laughs> Trip to Orlando, how does that feel? <laughs> Crazy. Got to sort it out with work now, but um, <laughs> yeah, very excited. Um, um, Rumble's looking a little bit, bit tired now. He was getting a bit bored of the pictures, wasn't he? Yes. Definitely bored. He's not tired. He'll go crazy in a minute, but um, bored, yes. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Good, good. <laughs> well, I hope you're looking forward to, to Orlando. Best of luck. You know how well the, the last winner did, yeah. so what are your hopes? I don't know. It'll just be lovely to be there, so I'm not expecting anything. I didn't expect anything today, so um, everything will be a bonus. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. So Andrew, we've just seen the Bichon Frise take the Yukonuba Champion Stakes finals. What's your reaction? Uh, well, if nothing else, it proves that nothing is a foregone conclusion. Because at today's competition, there were several of those great top dogs that have been, you know, in the frame all year. And lots of people said, oh, well, obviously it's going to be X, Y or Z. Um, when I saw the two judges that we had tonight, I thought to myself, nothing is a foregone conclusion and anything could happen and anything did. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. And congratulations to Trudy and Nigel Blivin. And of course, Rumble. We will see you next time on Around the Dog World where we will take a look back at 2012's big winners.